understand the perception process, let's look at how that relates to ourselves. So when you think about yourself, this is called self-perception. So how you perceive yourself. The book says that self-perception is the overall view we have of ourselves, which includes both self-concept and self-esteem. So I want you to think of this like a triangle, right? Where at the top is self-perception, which is like, this is my overall view of myself, how I perceive myself. At the bottom two ends, there is self-concept and self-esteem. So self-concept is kind of just your overall understanding about yourself and your, um, your, your perceptions of your abilities and what you can and cannot do. So this might be like just your skill sets, your personality, your competencies, or what you think that you're good at. Um, you know, it could be your personality traits. All these things that you believe about yourself, uh, that is your self-concept. It's kind of like your identity in another, I mean, that might be kind of an interchangeable word. Uh, how, like what, how do you identify yourself? All these little things that you know about yourself, that creates your self-concept. So that might be, do you think you're good at sports? Do you think you're good at learning? Or do you think you're smart? Do you think, you know, that you're a good singer? Do you think that you're funny? Do you think you're outgoing? Do you think you're quiet? Do you, you know, all those things that you would think about yourself, that's your self-concept or kind of the identity that you have constructed or that people have helped you construct. Um, I do think that self-concept, you know, one of the things that I think is really important is some of our self-concept is based maybe on our experiences, like what we've seen ourselves do. And so um, we think things about ourselves, but then also what people have told us. So, you know, over time, people may tell you things that could be good. You know, like with my son, I try to really lift him up and say things that are, that help him, but I also, or that encourage him. But I also realize that things that I say can influence what he believes about himself, right? So if I'm always saying, you know, you're, you're such a good, clean, like you clean up so well, you're always so polite. You're, I would say those things to him. He's going to start believing that. So I don't want to get in the whole, like the whole um, argument on if this is influence or not or whatever. That's just how self-concept works, right? The, probably people have told you things about yourself that you believe. Um, also, you have seen yourself do things that, you, that have made you believe things about yourself. So that's self-concept. Um, then you have self-esteem and self-esteem is how you feel about your self-concept meaning like what um do you like if you don't think that you're a good singer do you care a lot about that like does that make you feel really bad i mean maybe if you were in a, a singing situation like someone was like here here's a mic please sing the national anthem and you did terrible then you know then you, that might not be great but on a day-to-day -day basis does it really matter to you if you're a good singer maybe not uh, maybe it does if like your whole families are all really great singers and you're just this random one that can't sing at all. That might make you feel kind of bad. But for many of us, it may not be something we carry around with ourselves every day. Um, but then there's some things that you may carry. Like you may just feel like you're not very smart. Like that's a big thing to think about yourself. And so because you don't think you're smart, you know, that, that really affects your self-esteem. Um, and so you may carry this all the time or it may just be in specific situations. But all the things you think about yourself, like so your self-concept, um, that is like that then affects your self-esteem, how you feel about yourself um, based on what you believe about yourself. So both of these things work together to create your self-perception. This aspect of self-perception that I find very interesting is this thing called ideal self-concept. And so this is what you would like to be. Um, say that you, your whole family are singers and that is something that you view as a very positive thing to be musical, to sing well. Um, so you're probably going to want to be a singer and fit into that. And so your ideal self would be this great singer that can sing along with your family. So you'll take steps in order to become that self, right? So you might go take extra piano lessons. You may take extra singing lessons just so you can become more like that. So the ideal self is also what you're probably going to be sharing with people if they ask you about yourself. So we, it's a tendency, I think, for people to want to share the positive, um, to be seen in a positive light. So say I ask you, hi, tell me about yourself. What are you interested in? And all those things, you might say, hi, I'm so-and-so. 
oh, I'm, I, I'm really into singing. I, my family, we're all singers. We love it. But you'll probably tell me a lot about um, whatever it is that when you visualize yourself as your ideal self, the positive things, you're probably going to share that with people. I find the ideal self a very important aspect of self-perception because sometimes we can have this vision of our ideal self and it can seem so unachievable that it causes us to really our self-esteem to really be impacted uh, you know and this can be based off maybe people have told you you're not good at things or people tell you that you should be good at things and then you're not so then you just feel bad about it it can cause these negative uh, negative emotions um, but I also believe that it can be a really positive thing. Like if you can take it and instead of looking like, oh, I am not that and then being down about it, if you can take it and instead say, okay, let me define that ideal self. So often we are told things like people talk things over us and that defines our self-concept and the ideal self. But if we really took time to sit down and think like, are these things true about me? Do I even like these things? that we can take a moment and say, okay, no, actually, I think I am really good at blank. And that is part of my self-concept and my ideal self-concept. Or, you know, I really don't even like singing that much. I really like drawing, you know? And so then you're like, I don't really, even my ideal self really doesn't need to chase after the singing dream just because that's what my family wants me to do. I, I want to be an artist. So I'm going to chase after that. I think if we can define our ideal self by really looking inwardly and saying, okay, in myself, like who is, who, who am I? Like, what are the things I love? Um, I've been working over the last you know, 10 years to really define that self concept, that ideal self, so that it can positively work towards the Helen that I want to be. Um, so I would encourage you with the ideal self to take that approach. Um, if you look at your ideal self right now and it makes you feel really bad about yourself, over time, I hope you'll, you'll start breaking that down and you'll look at the ideal self and say, okay, now let me define what that ideal self is and figure out how, what steps do I want to take in order to get there. And the, the goal isn't to ever, probably ever to fully achieve it. It's to always grow and to always grow towards that ideal self so that you can be your best self someday.